How is Banjo Guy Ali? He is an asshole! More floppy drive conversion, folks. And uh, today on the bench, we've got this uh, uh, a ALPS Alps. Alps. I'm going to say Alps. Uh, DF354H uh, uh, and then whatever 089C uh, drive. I'm not sure actually if this is uh, convertible to Amiga format. I know the there's an 09 something that is. Uh, but we're going to open this one and just have a look. So this one, again, needs to be opened uh, from uh, this side. We've got one, two, three, four screws uh, to undo. So we'll do that next. Mr. President, th this is ridiculous. Just do it. A PCB way has sponsored a who, new video. Who the hell are they? They offer PCB manufacturing and part assembly, of course, but they also offer a number of other services like CNC machining, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. What should we do, Mr. President? Get the president on the phone. Dude, you are the president. I'll have what she's having. <laughs> And does this slide out as well? Oh no, we need to uh, uh, remove uh, the front here. So there's I see a tab here, one here. Okay, let's do that. All right, the real trick to remove this is uh, you see here. Uh, so you might think that this is uh, this is the one you need to push, but you need to push right here. Uh, firmly and there you go but we also need to remove this guy doing this with one hand is always tricky and i know i should get a tripod i should get more stable uh, videos on this channel but the point of this channel is um to provide it's more of a glorified vlog of my progress and what i'm doing uh, if I have to think about setting up shots and setting up a tripod and lighting and uh, microphones and all that kind of stuff, I, I would never actually film and there would be no channel. So this is what you have. <laughs> this is what you have to deal with. My my poorly lit, poorly filmed, uh, poorly documented channel. Uh, let's uh, open this. Yeah, there you go. That's one. And we're going to put all our little screws in there so we don't lose them. And the bottom, how does that come off? Oh, I think it just comes off. There you go. Okay. All right, so this is our PCB and it's different from the one I thought it would be. Uh, so we can actually use the mod for the Alps, uh, I think the 090C or something like that. But essentially, there's one common thing we can do. I mean, the, 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 those mods are essentially doing the same thing. Um, whenever you change uh, the floppy uh, or you insert the floppy, uh, a ready signal is, or a drive change signal, sorry, is sent from this IC to pin 34, that's on a PC. On an Amiga, it is sent to pin two. So what we need to do is uh, cut uh, somewhere, pin uh, the, the, the trace at pin 34, and connect uh, whatever signal is coming out of here to pin two. There's also a ready signal that is not usually used on the Amiga, except for uh, stuff like disk this copy, which is obviously very important to us now. And that is normally sent on pin two. Um, so we need to cut the trace here and uh, uh, get that signal from somewhere. I'm not sure where and send that to pin two. Um, very often you could... Uh, you could bridge on some models, bridge that over. It's it's the same, but we need to find out what this IC is and where that 
uh, ready signal is. But we can actually do the disk change uh, already, and I'm partially convinced that we'll be able to uh, to um, to get this uh, floppy at least testing okay in uh, Amiga test kit. Okay, that's our traces cut. I am going to remove the solder uh, pad as well, or the uh, solder blob on DS1. That should do it. There you go. And put a little blob of solder on DS0. The other thing, and I've done this already, is that DS1 jumper was actually uh, populated on a PC drive because PC drive uh, uses the first drive as DS1, not DS0. So we need to remove, the, and I did that, remove the solder uh, blob from DS1 and populate uh, DS2. Uh, I've, uh, I'm filming now, I've already uh, made a cut on pin 2 and one on... pin uh, 34 uh, and by the way also all these pins here are grounds so uh, essentially only all these pins are actually signals all these pins are ground for each signal the reason is for you know just uh, noise interference and that kind of stuff so you got to essentially alternating uh, signals uh, uh, sig you know signal ground signal ground and it's just to prevent cross feeding between uh, between uh, wires and planes so uh, all we really care about uh, when doing these mods are those signals here all right so i've got one wire uh, going to pin uh, two uh, coming out of the ic and this is the wire that was coming out uh, essentially that i cut and that was going out from here to here and I cut the trace and now it's going from here to here and I cut the trace going uh, to pin two and uh, if uh, oh yeah and we've uh, solder blob on DS0 right now I haven't done the uh, HD mod but essentially if we bridge um, let me just get this essentially the HD mod is to prevent uh, or to allow us to use uh, HD floppies easily on this. I mean, we can we can certainly bypass that and putting a, a bit of tape right here uh, to close the the switch. So, uh, as I mentioned in previous videos, there's a switch here when you insert your floppy, and that switch uh, is pressed. If your floppy is a double density, it doesn't have that notch cut off and it presses on the switch and tells it that it's a, a double density in this case it's hd it doesn't have that notch so the amiga will have uh, trouble reading that floppy unless we press uh, the uh, the switch manually what we can do however is bridge uh, this guy uh, to uh, hd here to ground and it'll close the switch and that way we can read the floppy but for now i just want to test that this is uh, running. Listen, let me just uh, power on the Amiga. Insert the floppy, and I think if we press on this guy, yes, it's picked it up. There you go. Okay, so the floppy is uh, booting to. So this, this is DF0. We'll do a signal test. That's working. Uh, head calibration, I'm not sure that will work as we expect. I mean, it certainly is trying. There might be a little bit of calibration uh, needed. It gets it 11 to 11 sometimes, so that floppy probably needs a clean as well. And uh, I haven't done that and a little bit of calibration. But for uh, next, uh, so it's it's working. The only thing right now, it will uh, it will read floppy uh, drives uh, floppy disks sorry but the only thing is uh, if i want to use x copy on that 
that ready signal that normally goes uh, to so, so that was the disk change that ready signal that normally goes to uh, pin two is somewhere there i need to find out where and i need to send that then to pin uh, wherever it was uh, coming from pin 34 i need to send that to pin 34 here that's where the ready uh, signal is going to stupid all right, so I did a what? Well, all right, so I did the uh, HD mod here. So uh, the uh, HD uh, signal here is actually going to this pin here, and I was trying to look for the shortest way to ground, and ground is uh, at this uh, capacitor here. So uh, this is probably a too long wire, but a little, a small wire going from this pin to this pin or to this uh, leg of the capacitor uh, grounds. Uh, the HD switch, which means we can now use uh, double density disks uh, without having to put a tape on them or whatever. Uh, and also, uh, so pin 34 needs the ready signal. And looking at the other um, um, pictures of the uh, um, other Alps drive that is well documented, and I forgot which uh, model it is, but uh, the ready signal is on that one is uh, mentioned by RD and this sort of shares the same naming convention as the other one uh, so I'm going to guess that we can safely connect uh, pin 34 to RD uh, for the ready signal and we should be all done before I continue, I want to address something. Uh, uh, in my previous videos, a few people got up in arms about the fact that I did the uh, uh, hardware mod for the HD drive. Uh, the argument was, you know, you can just put a bit of tape on the actual floppy to bypass that. The rationale behind it was, you know, maybe down the line I want to do use uh, HD floppies on my Amiga. Now, there's entire forum discussions about whether that's actually possible on stock Amigas or even desirable. I know the... Uh, was it the 3000 or 4000 came with HD drives? Whether they're compatible with older stock Amigas, that's debatable. Uh, and also, why would you want to do that? I mean, the, the whole point of these mods is to be able to read your old floppies, not necessarily write to it. Um, you can do that, but there's so many better, more available and more practical options now for storage that the fact of having more storage on a small floppy, like you're just doubling the uh, capacity, which is limited anyway, doesn't actually quite make sense. So I know you can do that. This is the way I'm doing it. If you want to do it differently, good on you, and you should do that. Okay, so that uh, mod is done, uh, RD, which uh, goes to actually this pin, uh, pin tree, which is the read uh, signal on the PC drive. Uh, I double, triple checked uh, with the other Alps uh, um, drive and from what I could see that same signal is bridge uh, to pin 33 and it also goes to this guy so yeah taking a bit of a chance here there's only one way to check is, uh, is to first uh, check that the drive is still working and then boot into X copy and try to copy a drive. All right, uh, inserted. I didn't need to press the switch. It booted straight into Amiga test kit. Interestingly, it's now getting the heads properly. So uh, could that mean that that ready uh, signal or yeah, ready signal is what we needed as well to get that to work properly? I don't know. Uh, let's boot into X copy and see if I can make a copy of X copy. Oh. gonna take a while so I'm gonna keep going here I just want to do this with one floppy just to check that everything is going okay so green is reading and yellow is just uh, writing all right we're all done and I believe that now uh, we should have a copy of X copy on this floppy if I reboot it's gonna be the uh, moment of truth but I think I th well, everything went right, so I, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. 
There you go. I think, uh, well, I think it went okay. So that was the uh, ready signal needs to be connected to that uh, read signal. And uh, I think that's sort of universal anyway uh, for those uh, those floppy mods. It's just a matter of finding uh, finding where those signals are. Uh, so that was cool. What was interesting is that this drive specifically isn't documented and uh, it seems some a lot of people were having trouble with it. Um, so I, I, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the uh, the patch that you need here. Uh, there you go, folks. I'm gonna put this back together and uh, and we'll end this video. And there you go, folks. That's uh, five out of five uh, floppy drive. Uh, what sort of restored? This one didn't have much work or cleaning to be done. Really, it worked right away but it was uh I, well i couldn't find documentation or information on on it this is the uh, df well it's in the title but df 354h uh 89c but essentially it's the same process as with every other, other um, drive get the disk change signal from the ic and route that to pin 2 so you might need to cut the trace at pin 2 and pin 34 and then uh, pin 34 needs to receive uh, the disk ready uh, signal. Uh, uh, I hope this series was interesting. It was a sort of spread out, but I, I just wanted to do them separately uh, because there are different types and they require different types of mod and, you know, uh, and things done. Uh, the HD one is something that a lot of people skip, probably for good reason, because they want to keep the ability to use HD floppies. I, I don't know. I don't see why you... I mean, technically, it might be able to um, get HD floppies and read them and format them. Uh, why um, you'd want to do that, though, I'm not sure. Anyway, folks, I hope this was interesting. Uh, thank you for watching. Don't forget, uh, you can uh, support the channel on uh, Patreon and YouTube memberships if you want. There's a Discord server if you want to talk about music and the electronic stuff and the old computers. And uh, you'll find me as well on uh, everywhere under Banjo Gaiali. Folks, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.